This lesson is going to cover perspective drawing. And I need to first define what I mean by perspective drawing. Uh, I would define it as an approximate, approximate representation on a flat surface, such as paper, of an image as it appears as it's seen through by the eye. So what we're really talking about is making a drawing look lifelike. Uh, as early as the Egyptians, there's evidence that they were studying this, trying to make things look more like they did in real life. Uh, things further away should be smaller things than the things that are closer. That's what it's based on. Euclid in, in the somewhere 300 BC actually introduced a mathematical uh, theory about this in his book, uh, The Optics. And uh, although there's some speculation whether or not his theory matches what we believe today, nonetheless, it has been around a long time. Uh, and it took off during the 14th century when artists worked together with mathematicians and to study this and to, and that's when it really started seeing a huge development in how we do things, how the, and how the drawings they became much more lifelike. So I am going to show you how to make a simple or let's see, elementary perspective drawing. Uh, first off, we're going to start off with a horizontal line. Okay. Uh, I put my ruler down, I draw a line. That line represents the horizon. All right. On the horizon, I am going to put a point. And I'm going to put it, let's put it over to the left side. If we do this on your notes, then we'll make a match and it'll make sense. This point is called my vanishing point. And that's where I can't see anything anymore. And that's where the image just, it seems like everything is leading to. And so what we're going to start off with is a one point perspective. And I'm going to use one point being one vanishing point. What I need to begin with, let's start with making a drawing of something very simple, such as a uh, shoebox. Okay. Uh, you know what a shoebox looks like. It's basically a rectangular prism, and which is longer than it is wide. Okay? What we need to start off with is a face. So I will, let's, oh, I'll use my ruler. Draw one face. I'm going to use this as my width. And one face will make it look something like a rectangle. Now notice, I'm using a pencil here. There are light lines. I know they're showing up very lightly on your video, but I'm, that's okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out because we're going to come back and make them darker. All right. I have four vertices. And what I need to do is I'm going to make a line that connects that vanishing point to each vertex. So four, four vertices, four lines. One. Notice what I'm doing. I put my pencil, then I move my straight edge to it, and then I line it up, and then I make the mark. Yes? That way, I can make sure I go through the points. You may wonder, why are we drawing this in geometry class? Well, we're doing this to get you better equipped to making accurate representations. All right, now I have a rectangle or square, if you think it looks like a square, I didn't measure it, and four vanishing lines. And if we could imagine that the, the shoebox, this is the width, and then the length is going to be back here. So what I'm going to do is make another line 
that connects. This is, here, I'll make it darker for you. This is my front face of my shoebox. And you can certainly go back and make this darker. Or you now those lines are guidelines. I am not going to make those darker yet. But what I am going to do is imagine how deep my shoebox is. And if I take my straight edge and I move it back, I use this purple one so you can see. Somewhere like that. I'm not measuring at all. But this line is also going to be a vertical line connecting the top edge and the bottom edge there. Now you can see two faces of my shoebox. Well, I see two faces. There's going to be a top to the shoebox. Yes? And the top is right there, but the back corner is going to be somewhere in there. And these two lines, edges, are parallel. Well, so is that back one is parallel. And I'm just going to look through. And it's nice to have clear rulers or something like that. This triangle came with a kit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that should be parallel to that. Yes? And then I just need to connect... those two edges. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges shown in my uh, shoebox. There are more edges to the shoebox, but I don't want to make them solid lines. And you may recall from earlier math classes, what you need to do to, hold, to, to show hidden edges is a dotted line. So what I'm going to do is straight down from that corner, there's another edge. I'm going to cheat over just a little bit because it looks like. And it goes dotted line all the way to that's my bottom corner. This is my back edge dotted line. And then there's another edge that goes across there. And ideally it would be parallel to this edge. There is a shoebox in one point perspective. So and this is one point perspective. And let's review where we started. We drew the horizon line, then we drew a vanishing point. We also, then we, then we started with the front face. And this was my front face right here. So that front face, which was a rectangle or square, looks like that. And then we drew those lines. Those lines have a name also. That's the vanishing point. These guidelines right here, those are called vanishing lines. I don't need you to erase those lines. Um, just leave them on there. That's like showing your work in an algebra problem. You're showing your, that's the, what you made your edges from. And so every vanishing line intersects at the vanishing point. All right? That's a one-point perspective. Oh, of course, I might as well mark this. These are the hidden lines. I know that's review for some... And that's a one-point perspective. Now, all right, we did one. Let's do another one, okay? Uh, so, like review, but we'll start with a horizontal line. Don't make your drawing so tiny that you can't see. Let's put a point on there. That's my vanishing point. And this time, instead of drawing a shoebox like we did before, let's make it, I want you to, have in your mind we're like a flying pizza box. So rectangular prism still skinny on depth and somewhat like a rectangle or excuse me a square. So we start first thing for one point perspective is make a rectangle. Oh I guess I should talk about if it's flying then 
my horizon is straight across. If it's flying, then it needs to be above the horizon. If it is below the horizon, then it's sitting like I can see the top because the horizon line's above it. If I move this image over this way, or moved it up this, if I if I were to take this and turn it upside down, then it looks like this is above the horizon and this is actually flying. So if we're making a flying pizza box, we're gonna put put it above the horizon. So I'll make a rectangle first. Oh, I cheated. I should have made those with my straight edge. Then four vanishing lines. One, two, three, four. Then a back edge. This is the bottom of the pizza is going to be somewhere like that, parallel to these two. Okay, and then this one is perpendicular, parallel to these two edges. Should be another edge right here. I will darken in everything we see, and I'll leave out. Notice that I'm not erasing anything. I'm just darkening. And you could do this with a pencil. All right, there's my rectangular pizza box flying through the air. All right, what if the pizza box has no lid and it's upside down? That means I can see inside there and actually can see that it's empty. So uh, what we're gonna do is that one's gonna go all the way down, but not forever. It's going to, there's a bit, another edge right there that's perpendicular to the ground. It goes there. And if it is indeed empty, then I can color that in. And then another parallel line that connects these two. So now I have a flying pizza box in one point perspective flying through the air. Notice I didn't have any of the... Uh, hidden lines, this is everything what you see, just the edges that you see. Okay?